I have to go get a haircut in 10 minutes, but let's play some cards. Literally within the first orbit, we pick up Pocket Kings. That's a warm welcome to the table. Out of the gun raises to $20, and that amount is not going to suffice. I three bet to 60. Action folds around to Out of the Gun, who decides to make the call. Flop comes just about what we're looking for. Ace, eight, deuce. F my life. Out of the Gun checks. I have range advantage. She might have a lot of stuff that doesn't necessarily connect here. So I throw out $40, but I'm not too pleased when she makes the call. The turn comes to seven of clubs. When she checks it to me, I don't see much value in betting again, so this time I check it back. River is of five of clubs. She checks it once more, and again, I don't see much value in betting here. I'm probably only ever gonna get called by better. What happens next, there's good news and bad news. Bad news is I flip over my cards first, the good news is they're good. We never get to figure out what she had. I let free information go to waste. By the way, I don't know if it sounds like an absolute windstorm while I'm recording this, but there's a nice breeze. I'm in Las Vegas. Let me live, bro. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna sit inside a dusty old jail cell of a hotel room while three of my friends are trying to sleep. Yada yada, eat the heart to a club. They don't care. They're trying to play a day two tournament tomorrow. Let me live. Anyways, we pick up two queens in the small blind. Under the gun one raises to $20, and Lojack and Button make the call. Since I'm out of position, I'm gonna go 4x here, but there are two additional callers. I barely passed grade school, but 4 plus 1 plus 1 is 6. That, at least last time I checked. 6 times 20 is 120. I'm gonna throw an additional 5 there for spice mainly because it's five green chips and it's way easier. I three bet to $125. Literally nobody wants to smoke, everyone folds. A singular orbit later, we pick up ace four of hearts in the low jack. I raise it up to $15 and action folds to the big blind who begins playing with his chips. Oh God, it looks like a monumental three bet is incoming. Prepare your eyes, shield your hearts. Raise thy swords and prepare for war. Just kidding, he folds. We take down another pair of blinds. If he three bet me, I should call most of the time with ace four suited and four bet as a bluff 30% of the time. A few minutes later, we pick up ace queen offsuit in under the gun one. I open a $15 and only the big blind makes the call. Flop comes eight, five, two. Big blind checks to me. I think this is a spot where I'm supposed to bet because if I bet big one calls, he'll check turn most likely. I can check it back and see a free river. However, if I check it back and the turn is anything other than an ace or queen, the big blind can bet and I'll have to fold. A C bet also folds out any hands like 10-9, queen jack, anything that doesn't connect with this flop, which there's going to be a lot, which we could use protection against because we only have ace high. For those mentioned reasons, I like a C bet but I check it back. I don't think it's the worst play. I just don't like it that much. Turn and River also check through and we end up winning against God knows what. After this hand, our stack was up to around $1,180 in 15 minutes. That's a great hourly rate if I do say so myself for a 2-5 game, but it's time to go. We have to get a haircut. We are currently on our way to get a haircut, and my face is bloated right now because in the last 48 hours, more alcohol has been consumed than the entire calendar year of 2021. I'm, it's a mess. We're in Vegas. What a hot start to a 2-5 sesh. Got kings, queens, and an ace-queen, all within five minutes of sitting down. Unfortunately, I have to leave. What's even sadder is this haircut is going to tap into at least 50% of the profits that we just earned. $70, welcome to Vegas. Bellagio, fuck, I don't know where I'm going. We figured it out, we were going the right direction. We're scheduled for 6.15, it's currently 6.10, I have to walk about three blocks. 
hopefully not get hit by a car and make it there on time. That's the objective. This is illegal, very much so. You know what they say, right? I'm really adopting the philosophy of a modern day rapper. If you're gonna commit a crime, at least talk about it. We're jaywalking as f We're good to go. We have to be good to go. We're so good to go. Hey, here for a 615 cut. What's your name, man? Irie, Corey. Thanks. Let me just say real quick, this was my first time in an actual professional barbershop. I didn't know they served free drinks. You can get cleaned up while getting absolutely hammered. They offered me a drink, and my go-to is Vodka Cran, so by their standard, I guess I'm a pussy, but I, I don't know what else I drink. I'm not a drinker. I don't drink alcohol that much. Okay, now we're cutting over to the barber. Her name is Yun. She is a wizard. The Harry Potter of haircuts. She's doing some ninja like, pew, pew. look how quickly she's making these cuts, dude. If Fruit Ninja was around when she was like 13, she would have been a fucking prodigy. Anyways, thank you very much for the haircut, Yun. It came out fantastic. Let's get back to playing cards. At this table, I felt like a border collie herding in a bunch of sheep because there were multiple instances where I would open, everyone folds. Open, everyone folds. Seven dollars, seven dollars, seven dollars. Great day, great day, great day. Thanks for doing business. For instance, here we have Ace-9 on the button. I raised it up to $15 and both full. Oh my god, just kidding. The big blind makes it 60 that is not a sheep, that's a wolf. I fall, a trickle of piss rolls down my left leg as I release my cards into the muck. Let's never do that again until next orbit. Here we have queen, jack of hearts in the big blind. Low jack opens to $20, small blind calls, and I do as well. Blob comes king, nine, two, with two diamonds and a club. We have a gut shot to a 10, but really nothing else going on. Small blind checks, I check as well, and the low check C bets $25. I think about peeling one here, let's see if we hit a 10 on the turn, until the small blind check raises to 75. Yeah, I'm out of here. Next we pick up pocket 10s in the cutoff. The low jack limps, and I raise the $20. Button makes the call, and the big blind and low jack come along as well. Flop comes 9-3-2 with two spades. That is a great flop for our exact holding. We're gonna get a lot of value from flush draws or any holding containing a nine. Action checks to me and I see bet $50. Only the button makes the call with around $180 behind. Correction, it's $192. $12, it's a big difference, I know. The turn is another great card. It's the three of diamonds. Pairing the middle card, and we still have an overpair. At this point, he doesn't have much left, and I still really want to get value from all of his flush draws. I don't want to jam and give him an incorrect price, but I also don't want to bet too small and give him a great price. I elect on a sizing of $100, and the button doesn't think too long before saying, I'm going all in. I cannot call faster in my life, and the river comes a brick. So I think I'm good, until the button shows pocket jacks. Yeah. He flatted a late position raise on the button with pocket jacks. It's fine. It, we're fine. Moving on from that catastrophe, we have pocket threes in the hijack. Low jack limps, I raised it up to $20, and the big blind and limper make the call. Flop comes ace five four with two clubs. I see about $35 and only the big blind makes the call. We're going heads up to a turn, which comes the king of hearts. I think this is a great card for my range, and I think about double barreling here, targeting a lot of middling pairs, or really anything that would call flop and fold to a second bet on the turn. But I put my tail between my legs and check it back. River comes a brick, big blind bets 75, and I have a straightforward fold. Next hand, we pick up ace two of spades in the big blind. Under the gun raises to $20, and the button and small blind make the call. Action's on to me. I three bet to 407, I make the call. I flat, obviously. Flop comes queen seven, two. Oh my God, we actually flopped a pair. Life is great. I check it to the pre-flop raiser, and he checks as well. 
the button checks it back, so action checks all the way around, and we're going four ways to a turn card, which, holy actual mother land of glory, it's another two! We, we turn trips! Small blind checks it once more, and I'm done with this whole checking thing. I fire $50 into the field, and only the button makes the call. The river comes the king of clubs. Shouldn't really change much. I have three of the same number. When I have a strong hand, or complete air, I'm gonna bet really big. I overbet pot slightly to the tune of $200. The button doesn't think too long before letting his cards go. We are not done with the pocket pairs today. I open it up to $15, and the button and big blind make the call. We go three ways to a flop of jack, jack, four with two spades. The big blind checks to me. I think there's a good possibility that I still have the best hand here, but our hand could use a lot of protection from any ace highs or literally any number higher than a six. I see bet $20, and the button makes the call. Then the big blind jams for $86. <sighs> That's a really annoying spot. The reason why it's so annoying is because it's quite possible that the big blind has a flush draw and just wants to get his money in. I'm fine with calling the big blind's bet. What I'm not fine with is the button having to act behind me. The button already called my $20 bet, which indicates some level of strength or at least interest in the hand. I don't want to bloat this pot up going three ways to a turn, which I'm probably not going to like regardless of what it is. If I were on the button and the cutoff folded to me, it's a snap call. But we're not, so I let my cards go. And then the button also folds. What is going on? Next spot of note, we have ace, ten of hearts in the button. Cutoff opens to $20, and I three bet to 60 then the same big blind, who jammed earlier, decides he really likes pressing that button, and jams for a hundred bucks. Cutoff folds, and I have a straightforward call. The big blind shows pocket queens. That's pretty good. However, we still have three outs. It just so happens that none of them come on this run out, and we lose all of our money. GG. This is the vlog of pairs, as we have pocket threes on the button. There are two limps to me, and I raised up to $20, trying to build a pot in case we hit a set on the flop. Be careful what I wish for, because the big blind three bets to 80, with a thousand left behind. Action folds to me, and like I said, if I hit a set on the flop, I think it's pretty straightforward. Plus, I'm in position of this player. I stick in the extra 60 to evaluate a flop. All of our dreams come to fruition when the flop is beautiful. King, queen, seven. It's not that great. We fold to $150 C-bet. This game sucks. Fuck! The next few hands we have queen, jack, and nine, seven. Flops come absolute dust, literally no backdoor possibilities, no connectability. We check fold and just check fold. We pick up a few more hands, do a lot of check folding, a lot of losing money, nothing really interesting to end the night. That concludes all of the hands for this section. I actually, that's actually the back entrance and the door's locked. I can't get back through unless someone walks out and that old lady just opened the doors so I can get back in without going through the front. Thank you, Grandma. That spot is genuinely so great. I'm gonna edit all of my videos out there from now on for the rest of this trip, at least. Thank you so much for watching. We were in the game for $1,200, out for eight something and change. Lost around 3.30. It is what it is, not a horrible day. Gonna play a lot longer tomorrow and get back at it. Thank you so much for watching. That's all I got. Till next time, see ya.